Hi there, and welcome to our instructional video on a pick line insertion. We will be using an ultrasound to help guide insertion, and as you can see, the patient is already prepped and draped and ready to start. The arm is externally rotated, extended, supinated, and abducted in order to properly position it. The first step is to use ultrasound in order to identify the best location for the insertion. First, let's look for the brachial artery. You can see that the brachial vein is also present and it is compressible. Next, we're going to look for the basilic vein, which is more medial and is also compressible. Typically, we will use the basilic vein as our target. The next step is to insert local in order to freeze the skin. Now that we've determined that the skin is appropriately frozen, we will use the seeker needle and use the creep technique with the ultrasound in order to locate the basilic vein. Once the seeker enters the vein, you should get some flashback. Now that you have good flash, the next step is to remove the syringe and use the guide wire and feed it up through the seeker needle. It is usually a good idea at this point to also release the tourniquet in order to allow the guide wire to easily flow up the vein. We've previously measured the distance and about 30 centimeters should be about right. Meanwhile, also keep an eye on the monitor to ensure that you don't start generating PVCs with the guide wire. Now you can remove the seeker needle and use the blade in order to make a puncture at the skin site. Now we're going to measure out the catheter and the length again just to be certain that we have the right distances. The distance is up to the mid-clavicular line. To prepare the pick line, you need to flush both of the ports with normal saline to ensure that there is no air 
within the system. Now is also a good time to cut the pick line to the correct length to ensure that it is not inserted too far. Now we're going to use the same blade in order to make the incision in the skin to ensure that the catheters will pass smoothly. Now we take the sheath and feed it over the wire and insert it into the vein. The sheath should advance with little resistance. With the sheath in place, you can now remove the dilator, but leave the wire in place. Next, we feed the catheter over the wire and advance it into the vein. The catheter should flow through the sheath easily without any resistance. You can now remove the guide wire. With the catheter now in place, you can remove the sheath by using its breakaway function. Snap both ends and then remove it. While doing so, keep a close eye on the catheter to ensure that it doesn't become malpositioned. While you're advancing the catheter, you can also ask the patient to look towards you in order to compress the internal jugular vein and prevent the catheter from migrating up into the head. Now, all you have to do is put some caps on the ends of the catheter and draw back on each of the ports to ensure that you have adequate blood flow and that they are properly flushed. Now the final step is to secure the catheter in place using either sutures or a securement device depending on your institutional practices. Finally then placing a dressing over top of it to keep the area clean and sterile. After you are finished the procedure, you should get a chest x-ray to ensure that the catheter is properly positioned in the superior vena cava. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.